Although Roma are the largest minority in Europe, they still experience high level of racism and have to deal with many societal issues. Additionally, Roma are being represented in a very stereotypical way in the media and the art world. The Roma theater has more than a century long past with active professional theater groups in many European uh, countries, but unfortunately, they are still hardly known. The Roma Heroes uh, Theater Festival initiated by the Independent Theatre Hungary is the only international Roma theatre encounter in the world, which have been organized in every year since 2017. Some of the present artists are there and their work are introduced in our series. And today my guest is Sonia Carmona, the, the performer of the play called The Profunda Dignitita Dignitatis, sorry, and uh, Jaime Vicen Bohorquez, the writer of the play, couldn't, couldn't make it for the interview. I'm really sorry um, about yeah. that. But Sonia, how are you? Oh, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, just dealing with all the new normality that we have around the whole world. <laughs> yes. So my first question... First of all, I want to thank you just just first i want to thank you and thank howl round to give us the opportunity to to just um uh, be able to showcase our work um to a really wide um, audience which um i think is as you said one of the things that uh we need yes i yes it's a very it's a very good opportunity i agree okay thank so you. if you are ready my first question sure. um could you please summarize very briefly what is the play about? Okay, um, it's not easy. It's not an easy question. And plus, to do it briefly, it's even more difficult. But uh, the Profunda Dignitatis is, is a mystery. It's a mystery play. Um, it's about uh, the deepest... Uh, part of the soul of the human being and this is uh, done by by um, dealing with uh, the real lives of two Roma women who lived um, during the times of the civil war in, in Spain and um, but um, everything is embodied in one character that uh, goes from uh, one layer to another layer, uh, even going from uh, a fantastic um, kind of theater to a sci-fi kind of <laughs> quite surrealistic um, dive into, you know, questioning uh, about uh, who you are and your dignity and how far you are, um, you know, willing to go without, you know, being untruth to yourself. If that makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And can you also share what's the most challenging and the most pleasant part of the play for you? Well, um, the most challenging part is to be on the stage for um, almost two hours, uh, just by yourself and uh, having a uh, really wide emotional uh, range that um, the character goes through. Um, the, the, the character is like, it's like an onion that uh, you are peeling throughout the, the play and it has um, sweet moments, sour moments, moments of self-realization, moments of uh, total craziness, total uh, quietness. And to be able to make this in a very organic way and um, invite the emotional roller coaster that, that you get on is uh, at the same time challenging, but also it is um, 
uh, great um, candy that this play means for an actress. Thank you. So I would say that, you know, the emotional range and being, you know, having to uh, be able to wrap the audience with you and have it with you all the time, breathing, sweating with you um, and going through what this woman is going and understanding uh, the, the path that, that um, is going on in this play. It's not an easy play. It's not nothing like a biopic or something like that. <laughs> so. Um, could you also share uh, some sentences? Yeah, I would say that. Your, your artwork and uh, the pr your principles in your artwork? Uh, sure. Well, the thing that um, I would say is most important for me, and also for Jaime, I think, is uh, all the poetic world. Uh, to be able to uh, go into another uh, metaphorical level in which the communion with the audience is so that um, you can really have this catharsis. Um, it's not just about entertainment, but it also has to be entertaining for the audience, but um, it has to uh, kind of like grab you and make you feel uh, all the, the emotions with uh, the audience that is coming to, to see the performance. So um, I think this is very important that uh, we go beyond um, like um, beyond reality towards some metaphorical world. And also for, for me, and I think also for Jaime, it is uh, important uh, to have uh, the truth, like to, to well, what is the truth? <laughs> but uh, to have this um, path in finding, you know, the, the questions, at least the questions, questioning uh, uh, the established um, thoughts and questioning uh, even yourself. So I would say that this is important in our work. It's always been, and also uh, it's important to, um, to try to give a, a di divergent, uh, way of thinking uh, to, so, so this contrasting um, world, you know, of reality and not reality and where is the thin, uh, you know, line that goes from one to the other. I think it's, it's a quality or um, something that defines our work. Because I think this play, um, this play, the Profunda Dignitatis, is uh, one of three. Uh, there are three plays. It's a trilogy, and this one, the Profunda Dignitatis, was written by Jaime for me as an actress, which also I think makes, um, you know, it, it wasn't just written uh, for anyone. It was written by uh, by uh, the author thinking about, you know and we know each other for a long time and um, so uh, I think it's it's also something that um, makes it at least for me special. Thank you and uh, I would also like to ask you that who and what inspired or motivated you during your life and also in your career? Do you mean in, in theater or you mean um, like just motivation oh, also to, to get up in the morning? <laughs> Both, also in theater Both. and also in, in your life. Well, I was in a way, uh, I guess, lucky uh, to be born at the end of uh, the Franco era here in Spain, even though I was born in, Co in Köln in, in Germany because my parents were emigrants. Um, but um, during the 
80s, uh, this country, Spain, was living kind of like a revolution, <laughs> cultural, um, freedom-wise, uh, people were eager for for seeing new things. So I was really lucky that uh, where my parents lived in the, in the building that we lived in Granada, uh, our neighbor in, on the fourth floor uh, was her mother. Uh, I, I was very good friends with uh, Begonia and her mother was Margarita Cafarena. Margarita Cafarena was a crucial person in my life. Uh, she was the person in charge uh, of the International Granada's International Theatre Festival that went on for maybe like 10 years. And this was like fresh air um, coming um, into, into our world. <laughs> and because I was very good friends with uh, her daughter, she always brought us along to everything. So I had the opportunity when I was very, very young, maybe like 12, 13, uh, to see, um, uh, I don't know, like people like um, Pina Bausch, <laughs> to, to uh, see uh, people, like, uh, that companies like Dance and, uh, and Roses, Dance and Roses, um, many, um, La Fula del Spaus, many uh, companies that really opened, you know, to a little kid <laughs> that I was, uh, opened a whole world that uh, made me definitely want to be part of the theater world and to try to find my own way of um, expressing and communicating uh, my inner world. <laughs> And of course, my parents have also been a uh, big influence. Uh, my father likes uh, art a lot. And I remember going um, just when I was very, very little, this would be like maybe when I was five or something like that, he would grab me by the hand because I'm the third of four kids. And um, my oldest brother and sister, they were always, you know, just finding excuses to not go along with my father to uh, see all the art gallery in Granada. So he would go and, you know, be watching all these um, um, uh, paintings and all this artwork. And this has been also a very big influence. And also, you know, listening to in my house to uh, many different languages, uh, because of course, you know, my parents were in Germany, but before my father was in um, Tangier and, you know, listening to all these languages and having all this uh, kind of like on the move <laughs> kind of feeling at home was also a big influence. Uh, you know, I would say that um, theater and traveling <laughs> are just on the both, <laughs> you know, <laughs> the le level of, um, importance in my life. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and I would also ask you, uh, what, what do you think about Roma theater? What does it mean to you? Do you consider it necessary to have? Okay, well, this is something um, that has lots of uh, sides to it. Because to me, I would love that we do, did not have to talk about Roma theater, black theater, brown theater, yellow theater, or any kind of theater. I would like to just talk about good theater, and especially if I could, just about good theater, <laughs> nothing else. But um, to me, Roma theater, what has brought to me personally uh, has been um, a questioning of myself, of my identity. I think I was one of this, what we could call uh, the invisible uh, Roma, or like we say in Spain, gitanos. Um, in fact, I never wanted to be uh, called, you know, gitana. This was like, you know, I was not a gitana for sure, because we never talked about this. This was very taboo in my house. So um, this has made me uh, question myself, who am I? Uh, you know, what, what it, is it to be a Roma? Um, I don't know. 
it's it's being uh, like um, an initiative initiative or initiation uh, trip yeah <laughs> and um, you know I wish that um, as I said we did not have to label our theater but on the other hand I'm sure that by labeling it also we are able to raise awareness and to raise questions the same you know that it happened to me um, because it is almost uh, incredible that we are in the 21st century and uh, we're still you know it's almost like uh, not seen really like badly or uh, that you know that uh, Roma people still in Europe are one of the most uh, mm, you know uh, stigmatized uh, so I think it's it's unfortunately necessary thank you I think you shared very important points now and lastly my question would be what is your future plan your goals regarding your career <laughs> well when i was studying um theater they always told us that if we were able to survive that this was um you know always like a plus that if we were able to uh keep on going in the theater world and not to have to be uh getting other kind of jobs uh to to make a um, survival that this was already a big success. So um, right now with all the pandemic and with all that, that is going on and culture always being, um, you know, the one that um, is left like it was um, not uh, ut utile or <laughs> not useful um, as if we could, you know, um, take culture away from, from life. Um, right now, uh, I'm uh, lucky enough to have many projects going on. I'm working in Poligono Sur here in Sevilla, where we are um, living, uh, which is one of the most stigmatized neighborhoods, uh, I think, in the whole of Europe. And I am working with uh, them, with uh, a group of uh, 17 young uh, boys and girls uh, from this neighborhood on a project called Roots and Wings, a human library of the Poligono Sur. Uh, so we will be making a human library um, with um, theater. We will be doing a performance, but we have been collecting stories from the oldest people in the area. And um, it is a really, really interesting uh, process that uh, we are going and hopefully this will be done by November 14th when we um, want to um, premiere our performance and hopefully you know you guys uh, will be able to also see uh, what these young people um, do. Also we are doing uh, a web series also with independent theatre which has been a trip <laughs> because I had never done anything like that so it's been really fun. And uh, I am doing a series for ERIAC uh, called Amor Roma, uh, in which I am investigating about uh, six different uh, Roma women uh, and, you know, dealing with love and, you know, trying to break down all the stereotypes that uh, are um, linked to uh, Roma women and the way they take love into <laughs> So thank that's it. You. Thank you. These are very interesting um, points and very interesting goals. And um, you have done a lot of work <laughs> that <laughs> you can do. So, OK, do you have anything that you want to add that you think that you want us you want to say, but you forgot or um, you didn't have well, the chance? I just really hope that you uh, like the performance that we bring to you. Um, I don't like too much when uh, theater is not seen in the 
theater or in a place where, you know, we can breathe together, but uh, at least this is an opportunity to be able to see, um, you know, a performance, uh, even though if you are far away. Uh, so just, I hope that you can breathe with me, laugh with me, and uh, go along on the roller coaster with the Profunda Dignitatis. And I hope that it raises questions to you and that you are curious about uh, these women, these uh, um, Roma women that, uh, you know, lived um, and were faced to these um, challenges. Uh, during the Franco or the Civil War. Thank you for the discussion. And now Thank you can you very much. <laughs> and now you can see the performance called The Profunda Dignitatis, created by Jaime Vicente Borges and performed by Sonia Carmona. Enjoy the show. 